Right, everyone, we have been joined by a familiar face from the channel. You may remember him from, what, about five or six weeks ago in the lead-up to the first game, eh, Shakhtar versus Celtic. Andrew Todos, you were on the channel. Better surroundings this time. I don't know about you, I prefer being in a real iconic football stadium to whatever software we used for that one <laughs> that I won't let on. Um, how are you getting on? Yeah, thanks for having me on again. Uh, been a busy five, six weeks. Yep. Uh, lots of Shakhtar matches that I've been attending across Europe. And I've also been to Glasgow a few, a few more yeah. times uh, in the meantime as well. Sadly, a uh, more negative result for Ukraine inside. But and sadly, Hamden. Not, <laughs> yeah, not, not exactly. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. It's my first game uh, at Celtic Park tomorrow. So I think it's going to be very exciting. Yeah, so we have just had the Celtic press conferences. Um, Joe Hart, Ange Postacoglu, you're waiting on the Shakhtar lot in what, an hour or so. So a, a busy old day for you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh I actually took the night bus up here last night, so I'm slightly worse for wear in terms of sleep, <laughs> but um, that's what you get for, for bloody train prices these days, eh? Yeah. Right, we'll let you hear what went down in the first part of the day then with uh, Joe Hart and Ange Postacoglu, then we'll have a wee chat. Yeah, it's a busy competition where you feel like every game is a huge game, um, and we're looking forward to it. There's a general feeling in the squad that you've been pretty happy with the performances so far in the Champions League. There's just been little details or fine margins that mean you are where you are at the moment. Ah, look, we obviously can't um, claim to be happy. We're not in a position that we want to be. But we've um, we've applied ourselves and we've we've put our stamp on the games. But we, ultimately, we want to we want to just go that that one step further. Um, and we intend to do that tomorrow night. Um, hi Joe, just actually away from the game, I've heard you do a lot of these press conferences since you came to the club and when you're asked about you know previous events in your career and, and the future, you always seem to give the response you're living in the moment. Can I just ask why you have that mindset and what advantages it gives you? I don't know if it gives me an advantage, it's just how I live I live my life, you know, I, I enjoy um, I enjoy every moment that I'm, get, that I'm getting. I'm obviously fully aware that um, my life as a professional footballer isn't uh, eternal. There's, a, there's definitely going to be an end to it, and I'm, I'm closer more to the end than I am to the beginning. So, uh, what's not to enjoy? What's not to love about being involved in competitions like this, playing for a club like this? Um, there's nothing I can do to change the past. Absolutely nothing, um, and I wouldn't. I've enjoyed every moment that I've had at previous clubs, but um, I'm certainly going to draw on my experience from the past. But I think, I think this, this club, this. This competition, uh, this squad, deserves for every single one of us to be present and living in the moment, and not, and not getting too far away from that. Uh, balls okay, Dave Turnbull's all right. Uh, Carl's back in training, which is great. Uh, it won't be too early tomorrow, but the uh, idea is to get him back into training over the next few days and see how he goes. Jota, again, he, he, he sort of had his last sort of, you know, rehab session today, so I'm expected to start training with us after tomorrow's game and be available for the weekend. Yeah, look, I think in the context of us sort of continuing in Europe, obviously it is. It's a, it's a must-win game tomorrow, and um, you know our, our ambition is to, um, to to try and achieve that, keep us alive. Um, it's not the you know just because we do. I think we deserve something. You, you automatically get it, or you you kind of feel like uh, you owed something. I, you know, my my sort of um, thought process around this whole thing is that if you keep putting yourself in that position of you know, playing. You know, the kind of football we want, creating chances, eventually you get your rewards. And, and, and for us, that's that's the key to tomorrow. Um, we've just got to play, you know, in the same manner, tackle it in the same manner, uh, particularly here at home. You know, put pressure on the opposition. And, you know, I think, again, you know, if we can create the same number of chances, then uh, it's about then con converting them. And, uh, you know, I think from my perspective, it's a lot better being in that sort of situation rather than trying to figure out how we're going to create chances to, to score goals. Hi Ange, as a supporter, looking at the group table, perhaps quite easy to feel despondent, but there's also a feeling I think there's a lot to be gained from the final couple of matches. You're obviously focusing this year's competition, but you're also aware of the, the bigger picture always. Um, do you feel you know real things can be learned over these last two matches, even if we finish bottom? Yeah, I, the despondent's a <laughs> strong word. Um, I hate to think people uh, yeah, who have been following us feel you know, especially our supporters that way. If, if nothing else, you know, I understand they'd be disappointed. But um, as I said from the outset, um, we've set out to play a certain way, and I, I don't think 
you know, despondent with me. And if I was saying we're going to play attacking football and we haven't created any chances, and you know, then you're shaking your head, going, "What's this guy talking about?" Um, so, yeah, you know, like I said, we're obviously have really high ambitions about our ability to compete at this level. Every game is an opportunity to progress that. And the only way I believe you can progress that, and I've said that from the start, is to really test yourself. Testing yourself for us is to go in there and try and play our football. I can go out there tomorrow and get a 1-0 victory and everyone goes home really happy. But within my gut, if we haven't played our football, I know what that really means. That doesn't really mean progress or testing ourselves to me. So we may finish bottom of the group, as you said. I hope that doesn't send people into despondency, if that's a word. Um, but. I'm, I'm pretty sure that, the, that, you know, our supporters, you know, what they've experienced and what they've seen is, you know, a team trying to really maintain their ident identity against the most toughest of oppositions. I think there's some, there's some merit in that and I think that's where, how you learn and, and, and develop and that's our goal in the next two games is not so much focusing on outcomes again about... <coughs> Yeah. Can we be the football team we want to be against the very best? If we fall short, dust ourselves off and go again. Right, so um, I'm going to need to look up certain words in the dictionary because Ange didn't like a certain word I used, I think, but this happens. Um, let's chat about the game, mate, because we're, we're looking forward to it. Listen, it's a big game for us. We want to try and get that first victory. Um, you heard all of that stuff there from a Celtic point of view, but a big game for Shakhtar as well in terms of trying to get to the last 16 of the competition. What, what's the kind of Ukrainian viewpoint in this match? Well, I think it's in their hands. And if they get a win against Celtic, then it's very much a do not lose against Leipzig. And I think they could be OK uh -huh. uh, for the round of 16. But there's also the toss up between is it worth going to the round of 16, potentially uh, facing you know, one of the top seeds that finished top of their group and then getting knocked out in the round of 16, or finishing third, which if Shakhtar get a draw against Celtic, it's more or less confirmed that they will be playing yep. in European spring, uh, playing in the Europa and trying to get to the final there, which might be a bit easier. I think I'm sure that from a sort of a face value perspective, Jovicovic, uh, all the players will be saying, we want that round of 16 Champions League. Uh, but, you know, I think either way, based on how, I guess, the thoughts ahead of this campaign were, mm -hmm. where everyone was expecting Shakhtar to completely bomb it, um, you know, with all the players that they've lost over the summer, uh, with all the young Ukrainians that they've got maybe a bit inexperienced. Yeah. But, you know, especially in that last game uh, against Real in Warsaw, which was absolutely, you know, crazy performance. Uh, sadly, uh, losing it, well, drawing in the very final seconds of the game after a bit of a laps and concentration from Trubin the goalkeeper but everything's to play for tomorrow so the first game between the sides in Warsaw the Shakhtar Celtic I felt Celtic were the better team that night should have won the game and yet we've got one point that game and Shakhtar are sitting on five so was that Shakhtar on a bad night what, what's what's happened it's a it's a weird one um Shakhtar have been pretty inconsistent yeah uh not just like in the Champions League but in general in games themselves they have these like spells of where the opposition are completely dominating, just as Celtic were, I guess, the first 20, 25 minutes mm -hmm. uh, in Warsaw. And then, uh, literally out of nowhere, Shakhtar had this five-minute spell where they scored twice. Obviously, yeah. Shred's goal was disallowed. Um, and then it's they somehow clung on after, you know, s shot after shot and chance after chance, which, I mean, you could probably say that uh, it sort of worked out a bit of, Shakhtar luck and mm. Celtic were unlucky and it, it was similar to I guess the two matches against Real Madrid for, for Shakhtar <laughs> a lot of the centre forward well Benzema had a bit of an off day on both occasions um, Vinny Jr probably could have scored about seven or eight in the game in Madrid that I was at but yeah. somehow it only ended 2-1 yeah it's just somehow someone's looking over them this season yeah team news wise you let on there before we started recording that certain Marion Schwed is, is out he is he's he not is. getting his Celtic Park bow still <laughs> he's never going to get it uh, yeah <laughs> it looks like he isn't unless um, so it could become the new um, Real Madrid or Man City for, for Shakhtar and start drawing them yeah. every year but 
yeah, he, I think, is the only confirmed absence that is 100% not even travelled. Or maybe he has travelled, but he's definitely not in the matchday squad. Um, I think Konoplia, the fullback, uh, ginger bloke, he, uh, yeah. he's had a bit of a niggle over the past few days, but he is in the squad, and so is uh, youngster Oleko Cheretko. But overall, I think the squad is as strong as it possibly can be for tomorrow's game. OK, um, the mood, the general mood, you're here with some, some fellow, well, not fellow, but Ukrainian. Do you class yourselves Ukrainian in any way? You speak yeah, the language, of don't course. you? No, of course. I'm a British Ukrainian, if you want to yeah. put it like that. Um, what, what's the mood like be- between you coming here? What? I think that everyone is sort of open-minded. There's not some sort of uh, downtrodden, we're going to lose or we're going to win. I think they're just embracing the moment and looking forward to the game, really. Uh, I think that obviously the two performances against Real Madrid, especially the last one, the draw, has given a bit more uh, of a positive outlook ahead of this one, just because of how Shakhtar performed, how certain players have started playing quite well. Uh, Alexander Zubkov, um, who's come into a bit of form recently. And it's just difficult to judge because uh, we were talking slightly off air a bit about the fact that Shakhtar have missed a few league games. Barely played. <laughs> and as, as you said, this would be something that in yeah. Scotland or anywhere else in the world probably would never be allowed because of, you know, the partisan nature of football. But in Ukraine, there's a rule. Well, I don't know how long it's been around, but certainly this season, if you agree with your opponent um, ahead of time, you can postpone the match. And I think Shakhtar have got two extra games that they'll be playing towards the start of December, uh, just before the winter break. As a result, I think they did it before Real Madrid. They did it the weekend just gone uh, when they were going to be playing against some minnows anyway. The main, I think, idea behind it is more just to get out of Ukraine quicker and easier uh, because you have to stay at the border on the bus and all this other stuff, which is a bit tiring and consuming and everything. But, uh, they've been given that. It was like a mutual agreement between the clubs that they've played and we'll see whether that's had any positive impact um, tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, Mudrik, is he once again the, the guy to watch? Is that simplistic to say that? I, I, I'm fed up of him. I've seen him, <laughs> I think since we last spoke, I've seen him play three times against my team, Celtic Scotland, tomorrow night as well. Yeah, uh, well, I, well, yeah, he's got a bit of a, a new love affair with Scotland. Yeah. Uh Obviously, he's not been that integral um, in the recent wins against, I guess, uh, Real, well, the draw against Real Madrid and then also that loss. There was There's times where he gets into the game. Uh, he's got the opportunity to break when he's played in behind the, the fullback and that's when he sort of is yeah, yeah. at his best. And he sort of drifts in and out. So I think he's got a lot to show for himself after obviously scoring in the first game in, in Warsaw. Uh, we'll see if he can continue it, especially as, you know, every week there's a new high particle from somebody saying that he's worth an extra uh, 10 million euros on top of what he was worth the week before. Yeah. So, um, yeah, he's got to make the most of it now because obviously two more games in the Champions League. Uh, there's no guarantee that he may stay beyond the winter if a big enough bid comes in for him. So I know I'm sure that he's in the shop window and he's looking to put on a show for everyone. So quick. So quick, and, and th- that's what gives me the fear tomorrow night because I, I think once again we're going to have a lot of the play, a lot of the possession, but Shakhtar can be devastating counter-attacking. Is that the way you see the game playing out? Absolutely. I think it will be very similar, mm-hmm. possibly to the first one. I think Shakhtar will just try and manage the game a bit better because the press that uh, Selwick were doing in, that I guess, that first 20, 25 minutes was like quite overwhelming for them. And obviously yeah. when Celtic scored, it sort of calmed down slightly and uh, Shakhtar got the goal. But... This time around, I think they'll be trying to be a bit calmer because it was all a bit chaotic, really. Was, yeah. And luckily, well, against Real Madrid uh, in the second leg in Warsaw, the one-all draw, uh, the defence looked a bit more assured mm-hmm. uh, and they had been pretty shaky over those first three games. Uh, some of those players, uh, Valeri Bonda, uh, the two fullbacks as well, Mihaila Chenko, he's got a couple of assists and uh, Konopla, who I mentioned might be in contention to start might not be after uh, having a bit of a niggle but we will see it'll be interesting I think they certainly will be playing similar football to what we've seen from them already this campaign nothing different Uh, 
completely, you know, the fact of the matter is them playing in them playing or not playing in the Ukrainian Premier League doesn't give too much of a, I guess, litmus test anyway, because the football they play there is completely different. They're very much on the front foot in those matches. Yeah. They're, they're defending, well, they're playing against sort of 10 defenders and they're still scoring, free scoring. So that's not much of a, not much of a gauge. So we'll see how everything happens tomorrow. Um, well, that my final question then, right? How is it going to go? What's your take right now? <laughs> oh, I don't Celt- know. Celtic win, that's what you really say. <laughs> I've got a feeling maybe another one all, uh, right, okay. and then then it will be a harder, hard fought um, game into the final final match day. As Ukrainian sides have recently uh, been sort of putting upon themselves, and well, lucky we're not playing Scotland uh, in Krakow again because oh. I don't want to see that nil-nil draw ever again. Horrendous <laughs> game. Well, it's all right for us, but horrendous. <laughs> um, Andrew, remind people where they can read about you, etc. Yeah, absolutely. If uh, you want to follow me or my uh, podcast uh, at Zoria Londonsk on Twitter, Instagram, and Ukraine Plus Football, the got an English language podcast about Ukrainian football on all podcast providers. And knowing Celtic and Scotland's recent record, we've probably got a Ukrainian match in about three weeks or something like that. So, Andrew, thanks once again. Thanks, everyone, for watching this video today. We will be around after the game tomorrow night, hopefully looking back on a positive result for Celtic. Enjoy the game wherever you're watching it. And, yeah, let's hope that Celtic Park is buzzing tomorrow night.